Good morning, everyone. Thank you so very much again for being here with us today and for bringing your light, your love, your joy, your beauty, your passion, your wholeness, and all the other things that we bring when we come in in the morning. You know, I was at a, a family party and I was in the company of cacophony at that, such a party. And I think some of you might actually have some sense of what that can be like when it's an intergenerational party and there's lots going on and there's small children who are not with the agenda. And then there's an agenda and then there's a memorial sort of and a grieving process and hunger and crying and everything going on at one time, right? And so we come to church and we have this sort of sacred, holy quiet. And sometimes we go so deeply into that and it's so sweet and so special. And we have this quiet space that can lead us anywhere. And we hear that still small voice and we listen and we open and we expand ourselves. And then we wonder, and is, what else is there? And in this party, all of a sudden I realize the power and the strength of the cacophony of life that the goal isn't always peace. The goal is to be peaceful in the presence of the chaos. And so as parents and as friends and as family members and of all people who are doing number of things in the world today, all the ways that we're showing up in the world today, the goal is to be the peace within so that we can experience the life that we're here to live. So that we're not knocked off our center by what someone else needs or how it's going for someone else or how the universe sees, to, sees fit to create a situation for us that is a little less than the one we were looking for. For instance, children crying during a baptism. <laughs> so this morning we had this beautiful baptism and children cry. Babies aren't, they're like, what is this? I don't know about this. I'm not sure why well, well, I'm in a strange place. And the, all the energy comes into just allowing that to happen, not to constrain it, not to make it different, not to try to fix it, but to call it good with life. Cacophony, the outside of our inner selves, is actually where the fun is right? It's like, really, there is deep joy in the places where things don't go right, in the places where people don't like what's happening, in the places where we don't like what's happening. One of my, one of my, mm, I think, deepest spiritual, oh, what would I say, like awakenings was to realize that joy is actually one of the highest spiritual attainments. Not necessarily only peace. Joy. How do we find joy? Honestly, I think some of us numb ourselves into peace so easily. We've gotten so good at numbing peace that finding the joy can be a challenge. And finding the joy when other people are misbehaving. Can you believe people do that? They don't follow our agendas. They don't go the direction we want them to go. The cars do all sorts of crazy things. They, if you happen to be in New York, sometimes they close bridges. And they just tell you with a sign, choose alternate route. Right? So choose alternate route. Which one are you going to choose, inwardly and outwardly? Something happens in your environment, and what are we going to do? If we can actually get with the program, which is there is no program, right? If we can get with the idea that we are in a flowing and un, un, wow, folding situation, if we know that there is actually no one right way to live, that we know that truth comes in many sizes and shapes and colors. And when we are all moving between these shapes and colors and sizes together, they bang into each other. And then who are we? Who are we? Because, you know, it can look like it's easier to be alone. 
right? It can look like, ah, oh, this family thing, and they gotta get everybody together, and it's such a thing, and or my friend thing, or my work thing, to work together is so hard. But we're learning that the beauty and the joy and the, the sort of juice of life is when we stop trying to make it happen alone in the quiet and the presence of the space that we're in and we actually open our eyes and say ow that hurt or oh that made me feel sad or ah oh, there's a light in someone's eyes or seeing and feeling the simplicity of a moment when you're looking at a flower smell touch taste so many have been guided in our culture to think that the way to meditate, the way to become spiritual is to push life to the outside and then live quietly in our little way in the center. One of my teachers used to say, it is the greatest disservice to our joy to think that you need to push life outside. When Cynthia Bergalt, who is a, uh, an Episcopalian priest, who went back to the Aramaic and went back to the teachings of Jesus and came through with another man named Jean-Jacques Leloup, who reinterpreted and retranslated all of the, the uh, New Testament and the life of Jesus, when they went back there, what they found was so many interesting things that weren't actually necessarily meant the way we thought they were meant. And when you look at the life of Jesus, and this is not a Christian church, and I'm just saying this is a story of this from the Bible. When you look at that, what you see is a man who was fully engaged in life. That's why he was in trouble all the time. Because there were a whole bunch of people that thought that you needed to do this thing by going away quietly, separating from all the people, sitting quietly, and sitting on a mountaintop, quietly separating yourself from the world. And that was not the path, that was not the path that that teacher chose. That teacher's path was to engage himself with humans, to pull people towards him. Women who are sort of hard to find in this aspect of the Bible, but there were as many apostles that were women as there were that were men, and he liked that. He liked having women around. He had one woman friend in particular, who we might know as Mary Magdalene, who some people might have thought to malign her character, perhaps, as a way to create a little bit of leverage. But the truth is he was engaged with life. People anointed him with oil. He talked to people in the street. He talked to, the, to those who were ill. He talked to those who were suffering. He brought his heart everywhere. The teachings of Jesus, whether we're not talking about him as a savior in this conversation, we're talking about a teaching that says, love the person right in front of you as yourself, as yourself. There was a word in Aramaic called singleness which some who wanted to go backwards to some previous teachings had imagined meant celibacy. Singleness meant celibacy. And so they kept inviting Jesus to say, no, I want you to be back and away from the people. That's the teachings after he had gone his way to God. And what, in fact, this teaching really means, what this word singleness really means is a word we talk about in this world so much is oneness. It doesn't mean we're separate. It means we're one. It means we're all together. And so in this journey, as we imagine ourselves in life, if we're all one, we better know who we are by knowing who each other are. We get to know ourselves by seeing the reflection in the multi-faceted right here. Look around, look who's here, and look at yourself in all the different shapes and sizes and colors that we come in. This is the cacophony of life. If we told you all to show up in your little uniforms this morning, and you had to be all dressed in one way, and you had to all look the same, and we had to all there would be very little of that cacophony. There would be very little. 
But when you watch families or children or people who are trying to make their way in the world with awareness, what you see is people bumping into each other all the time, had likes and dislikes and ways of being, and you're too much this and you're too much that and this doesn't fit in my world, right? Well, how do we find joy in that? How do we find joy in the fact that everything is so different? The joy, the joy comes from letting go of what we think things should be happening. When you watch children, like I did at this party, it was, it was so fascinating how fast they go through these changes and how quickly they just move on and how they let go moment by moment, right? So one second, they're all having fun. The next minute, three of them are crying. <laughs> Two of them are in the bathroom. One of them is hungry. You know, I'm like, whoa. And then the next minute, something else is happening. And then suddenly, there's ice cream. Right? And everything is okay for everyone, right? So what I'm inviting you to consider is to not, not be worried about the moments where things are changing or where things look different or where you don't look like the people around you or you don't talk like the people around you or you have different needs than the people around you. To reach into your world and get familiar with what's around you dive into your world and ask people, I need you. I need your help. I need your love. I want you. I want to have a rich, full life. I want to come somewhere and sing together. I want to dive in. And I don't care if it gets messy, because messy is beautiful. Messy is where it all happens. The only thing that makes all this not work so well is when we get stuck. When we decide that it has to look the way it looked yesterday, or we decide that it should look the way we thought it should look tomorrow, or we decide that our way is the only way, I don't know, have any of you ever had that experience? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, or 20 times a day, or whatever it is. Because we, as humans, have a larger scope that we are bringing ourselves alive into. We are the larger scope. So as we bump up against things, it's the whole universe, the whole world saying, let's have some fun. Like, you know when you're dancing and people bump into you, you don't really mind. But when you're walking really fast in one direction and someone bumps into you, it really hurts, right? You can really have a pretty strong bounce off them. So. When we're raising kids, we see it. We watch them move through these things. When we're working with adults, we watch the process has slowed a little bit, and sometimes we get stuck. If you find yourself stuck, what's a great question? Where is the joy here? Where is the joy here is a great question, right? What if we always asked ourselves when something went away we didn't think it should go, where is the joy? I was um, being with the parents this morning in the baptism and I was remembering my son's baptism and it was at Agape and there were, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand people there. And my son was screaming bloody murder I, for the whole entire time. And Reverend Michael Beckwith was standing talking to the congregation like this. And finally, I literally got down on my knees with my son and I breastfed him because there was nothing I could do. Nothing. I had so surrendered to the moment. I'm like, here you go, kiddo. And I'm down on my knees and Michael is talking and he's looking like this around this huge congregation and he says, and parenting will bring you to your <laughs> <laughs> knees. And there we were. <laughs> That's life happening. That's being awake and present to the moment. That's knowing, of course, I was going to comfort my child. I was going to do anything I could to comfort him. He wasn't crying because he was trying to annoy me. He was crying <laughs> because he was really uncomfortable. And he was really upset about something. And he knew, and I knew, what would soften and what would calm him down. And that literally what brought me to my knees. I had to go out on a limb further than I expected myself to and breastfeed my baby on a stage in front of a couple thousand people. 
and I was okay with it because I kept surrendering to what was going to happen next, what needed to happen, where the opening to life was, where was I going to start to feel like I could breathe again, where was he going to breathe, where was my partner going to breathe. And we just kept staying present and it created the funniest moment and the most beautiful like crack seam light pours in right light pours in and light pours in and light pours in if we insist on controlling our lives we will miss the light that's trying to pour in the cacophony of joy the noise of life is the good juicy stuff and if we look for joy if we look for passion if we look for kindness if we look for whatever we want if we look for love or with love or at love it always finds us always finds us and so as we open our eyes in situations that are not going the way we want to or changing when we don't want them to change or whatever it is that might be happening it's just too much for us breathe together and ask whatever question wants to be asked inside you for a while I used to use the affirmation or I guess you could call it a mantra there is love here to direct my attention when something wasn't going the way in the middle of an argument in a push-pull with with um, a partner with a child with anything when I wanted something that I just couldn't get there is love here what is it teaching me we are the constant students and the joy I want to overemphasize maybe the joy is when that breaks open love the life you're in live the life you're in let it make you surrender to your knees and awaken to the joy and the passion who you are is waiting to be exposed the reading today from Reverend Paul exult in the fact that the courage to step out is showing up for us live into the moment where we can feel the excitement that something is moving and wants to change something because if we're paying attention we will notice that that is going to happen over and over because that is life every breath we take in and out changes us and changes the world around us so as we open our arms and embrace life, as we play fully, full out, we let go. Ready? Forgiveness is simply allowing the joy back in to you. Forgiveness is a story you've told yourself that something is worth not loving. Something outside of you, you are going to give it the power to destroy your joy. I know we're not all ready for forgiveness and that's okay because we're on our own individual deep seated journeys and I want to say that the moment you can choose for yourself that you are finished with whatever is blocking your joy and believe me in this moment why don't we all just take something that we're letting just even slightly pull our joy keep us from loving fully what is that thing or that person or that place or that event what if we just all held our hands up in the air and just let it go don't put it on anybody else make sure it goes so you can go up and we can have it be transmuted into light and you can just have this shower of light pour down on top of you how about that Whew. Or you can shove it down into the earth and stomp it around a little bit. And we call this compost, right? And then you walk on it. You know, like cows, they say it's great for cows to graze in big fields because they, they stomp on their own poop and they get it into the ground and then the grass grows. The grass likes poop. Who knew? We don't, maybe. Regeneration. What? It's called, it's called regeneration. There we go. Thank you. Uh, June in the house. So, 
in these moments that we let ourselves fully believe that we are worthy of joy. We are worthy of letting go. We are courageous and we are powerful and we are loving and we can let it go. We can stomp on the earth and we can be reborn in this moment to the fullness of the joy that already lives within us. All right? All right. All right. Are we doing it? Okay, we're doing it. So, Dale, she's going to bring us home. All right. All right, ready? So. I want everyone to enjoy what she's, she's part of the sermon today. That was a perfect okay. sermon Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, if everybody, anybody, <laughs> that was not. So anybody who wants to stand up and try, try this on. on.